with. Um, can you tell our listeners a little bit about Undertow and what they can expect from this film? Uh, yeah, sure. So Undertow is a psychological thriller that really focuses on the relationship relationship between two women, a woman called Claire, who I play, who uh, loses her child during uh, labor at the beginning of the film. And uh, through the course of the film, she develops this dangerous fascination with a young teenager who is pregnant. She becomes very obsessed with this baby that the young woman is carrying. And, uh, yeah, her sort of her, her mental state and her obsession leads to things getting pretty dicey and dangerous for the, both of them. Yeah. Now, you're no stranger to playing some pretty confronting and harrowing roles, but how did you prepare yourself to play Claire with what Claire has been through? Yeah, I guess I started... I, I spent a lot of time with Miranda Nation, the director, and we really went over the script and the different themes and what Claire was going through at each specific moment a lot with a fine-tooth comb. I mean, I, I think the script is such a great blueprint on every job. And then there were specific uh, elements that I really needed to research. What it was like to you know, go through having a stillborn baby is something that I obviously haven't experienced and I really needed to kind of delve into and understand what that is like on a, a physical and a psychological and emotional level. And we did a lot of rehearsals with uh, the, the other main actors, particularly Rob Collins, who plays my husband. We did a lot of work kind of creating the background of our relationship before the film begins. And, um, yeah, I guess with the, the sort of... The, the mental illness side of things, we looked at what it was for Claire that was specifically going on for her and we, we looked at something called brief reactive psychosis where something, a trauma triggers this sort of, this mental breakdown uh, and it can happen to someone who hasn't experienced mental illness in the past and can actually have a full recovery from um a, a, a situation like that. So they're kind of the key elements that we threw into the pot and uh, kind of um, went from there. Yeah. For all the actors and actresses that are listening out there, especially the younger ones, how do you go about doing research into what it feels like for a mother to have a stillborn baby? Like, is there a is there people that you can go and talk to or do you do a lot of research online? What is that process of research for you as an actress? Yeah, it sort of depends on different roles. I mean, I you know I did a role last year that had stuff. Uh, um, the character had been in the military, and so then I definitely did go and speak to people uh, who had been in the military and, and that sort of thing. And then with with Claire and the specifically the stillborn, um, the stillborn, sorry, part of the story. I guess I I found actually on podcasts an enormous amount of um, women who were sharing their birth stories and, and talking about the whole experience of um, giving birth to a child that had died or that dies during childbirth. There was just a plethora of kind of information uh, in those um, podcasts and also on YouTube. A lot of women, um, because stillborn and stillbirth is something that hasn't been, has been a real taboo subject for a long time. And so there wasn't a lot of people that talked about it for many years, particularly, you know, going back decades. And I've found that now with the internet, women are getting on their, like on their bedroom floor with their laptop and uploading kind of confessionals to YouTube about like where they're at. And it's really raw and really um, fresh. And so I found that that was kind of, um, in a way, more helpful getting into what it would be like when it's something like that has just happened and you're not even processing it yet and you haven't kind of, you're not, you have no perspective yet. Because uh, some of the people that I spoke, I spoke to who, who have had that experience in their past, they're at such a different point now talking about it in retrospect than um, what it was like for them when it was really happening. So, um, yeah, but in terms of the young actors researching the internet is obviously a great starting point. If you can go out and talk to people in the flesh, that's great because there's something kind of that happens when you're watching, you know, 
when you're watching someone talking and thinking and that can give you real insight into human behavior, um, obviously with great respect yeah. um, to the person that you're talking to. Yeah, but there's, I guess there's a lot of different ways and people also, actors all have different ways that they process things and what works for one person won't for another. So it's kind of finding your own way and I tend to kind of throw a lot of things at something yeah. and sort of wait for what sticks yeah. and then really go, okay, well, this is where I'm going. <laughs> So what was it about the script for Undertow that made you want to take on this role? Was there something in there when you first read it that just made you say, look, I need to do this? Yeah, there's something sometimes that happens to me when I read a script and it's not really anything I can even articulate it, but it, I feel it in my bones and I kind of, there's just something like on a real gut level that just draws me in and I definitely felt like that when I read Undertow. I think the fact that we are exploring um, themes like pregnancy loss and mental illness and also what what really attracted me was this strong relationship with the young woman in the film, Angie, played by Olivia, Olivia de Jong. I mean, it was there were so many elements that appealed to me, also working with Miranda and, um, yeah, playing this complicated, damaged unlikable at times woman uh, who had just a lot of different layers to her with a real draw card. Yeah. But the thriller and suspense element to this movie, does that mean when you have a relationship like you do in this film with Angie, does that mean that because of the thriller and suspense element of the movie, you've kind of got to have a really close relationship with Olivia as well, like closer than what you would say in a film that's a comedy? Oh, that's a good question. I don't really know. I think relationship relationships in stories and in scripts, it doesn't really matter what the genre is, the relationship that's on the page will demand a certain intimacy or kind of level of connection, regardless of uh, whether it's a comedy or a, a thriller. Um, the, the relationship with my character and Olivia's character, we meet for the first time on screen, so we, we didn't spend that much time rehearsing together as opposed to the amount of time I spent with Rob because we kind of wanted to keep it fresh and keep that chemistry for for the camera for being on screen and, and that worked really well for us but there was definitely a, an enormous amount of trust that we had to build and uh, you know feeling of safety between each other to be able to go on that journey together. Yeah. You mentioned wanting to work with Miranda as well, and she's one of the pro most promising uh, directors we've got out there at the moment. Tell us a little bit about what it was like working with Miranda as a director and, and what made you want to work with her so badly. Sure. Well, I had seen her um, previous short films and was really blown away by them, particularly Perception, which was her uh, most recent film before yep. she made Undertow. And so I was definitely knew that I definitely knew that she had a great kind of um, affinity with the camera and the visual storytelling uh, side to filmmaking, as well as uh, working with actors. And on set, I just found that she was she was just such a, a sure presence. She really knew what she wanted, and she was um, very collaborative at the same time and just created a really safe environment that made us feel like we could play. And I think because she came from being an actor initially, she had a great understanding of um, actors having all different processes and really facilitating that. And um, yeah, it was, it, was just, it was also really great to work with a female director. Um, I obviously haven't done that as much as I have worked with male directors and it was, it was such a great opportunity that I, I was thrilled. Yeah. As an actor, do you find working with a director who has been an actor is in some ways easier because they understand what you're going through? Yeah, I don't think it's um, hard and fast. I don't think there's any one rule because I've worked with directors who haven't been actors who have been awesome. But I do think that actors, uh, directors who are actors or have been actors, they definitely do come with a um, not just an understanding of kind of process and talking about stuff from an actor's point of view, particularly script-wise. But yeah, they get the, the feeling of vulnerability and 
feeling exposed on set and the kind of the nerves and, and everything that can come with that. So um, I do think it is a good thing, usually. Yeah. But yeah, it's not, it's not the only way. <laughs> yeah. Now, we want all our listeners out there to head out and check out Undertow in the first week because we know that's so important for Australian films. So is there anything you would like to say to our listeners out there before they go out and see Undertow this weekend? Um, yeah, I just I hope that you get out there. It opens March 5th, which is tomorrow. And um, we're super excited to be an Australian film getting an inter- uh, not inter- a national release. And I really hope that you get a lot out of it and um, tell your friends. Definitely. Well...